All right, so this week we're testing out the Freefly Ember, which is an $18,000 super slow-mo camera or high speed, whatever you want to call it. It's called high speed because it records a lot of frames every second, and then you can stretch that out over a long period of time. But now let's go ahead and bump it up to 120 frames per second, which is actually fairly common, like the A7S III can do that. And we have Sam here to show us her special talent. Go for it. <laughs> All right, cool. So uh, you guys want to see the playback on that? So this is recording five times more frames every second. So when we play it back, we could take a one second clip and stretch it out to five seconds. So this is the iPhone 14 Pro Max, and this could actually do 240 frames per second in full HD. So that is 10 times more frames every second. So basically 10% speed. Dude, that's actually pretty good. <laughs> but here, even at full resolution, we can go past that. Actually, if I scroll up to the top here, I could just see what the max is for this resolution, 436 frames per second. That's because we're at max resolution solution but we can go ahead and drop that down oh yeah look at that <laughs> just <laughs> All right, so this is 616 frames per second, and if I divide that by 24 frames per second, so every second of recording gets pulled out into about 25 seconds. But let's see here. It looks like we can get 1,011 frames per second. Can your lips go. handle it, Sam? I'm getting ready. Hold on. <laughs> and we're rolling. Oh, yeah. That was <laughs> what happened? Uh, too much pressure. <laughs> That's the most beautiful thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you know, it's funny, we could definitely like find the right frame and just freeze it. <laughs> One of the things I love about this Ember is how easy this thing is to use. I mean, it's literally on off, record, and this is like your select and jog wheel. So between these four switches and buttons, you can pretty much navigate the whole menu. Or right, we're gonna go ahead and switch to a wider lens here. This is a super 35 mil sensor here. Oh, dude, I gotta try this. All right, here. Go you tulips in a twist. <laughs> you look like you work in the DMV. <laughs> <laughs> you go from like newborn to old man really quickly. If you want to film more stuff, actually, do you want some dessert? I do. I'm hungry. There we go. That was good. That was beautiful. Now, as fun as it was throwing pies in each other's faces, the real reason why we booked this camera was for the latest Veritasium video on fireworks. If you haven't seen it yet, definitely go check it out because it features your favorite potato as well as a bunch of Ember footage. Now, in the past, we have made videos about the Kronos camera, which can surpass this in frame rates and cost way less, but it is far from being cinematic, more for scientific purposes. Then Freefly released the Wave, which I actually thought about getting for a little bit because you can achieve some great shots if you have even lighting. But it did lack dynamic range. On the other hand, I asked Aerie, why don't you make an Aerie Alexa that shoots super slow motion? Because you already have that great dynamic range. And they said it's because if they were to design the camera to do a thousand frames per second, it would sacrifice on other aspects of the image quality. So Ember is an interesting middle ground where you get super slow-mo, but still maintain 11 plus stops of dynamic range. And a great way to test dynamic range is giant balls of fire. And honestly, I was pleasantly surprised with the image quality coming out of this camera. I mean, even even my Sony a7 IV can get more dynamic range out of this, but for something that's high speed like this, this is pretty dang good. Now there is the Phantom cameras, which can give you 13 to 14 stops of dynamic range, but that makes the $18,000 price tag on the Ember look super cheap. So I think the Ember ended up being the perfect camera for this shoot. And it was just so much fun to huddle around the camera after every take and just see the playback. Whoa! That was nuts. Just when I thought you had the money shot before. Right? <laughs> you keep getting money shots. Yeah. This camera is like the money shot deliverer. It's also really nice that there's no buffer limits of this camera, so you can just hit record and it'll keep recording until you cut it or burn through four terabytes of data. That four terabytes is internal, so to access those, you just plug in a USB-C cable, it pops this as a drive, and you just copy paste the ProRes 422LT files. So to prevent myself from going bankrupt from buying SSDs, I found it pretty easy and quick to just trim inside of QuickTimes and just save a new version that's trimmed. It would be kind of nice to be able to do something like this in camera, but just doing this after downloading was not that big of a deal either. All right, we got to get a few underwater slow-mo shots now. It'd be cool to take that underwater, but we don't have a housing for it, so we're going to just take the A7S and live with 4K 120. Once you start recording at like 800 frames per second, filming in 120 just doesn't feel the same, but <laughs> at least it's a good excuse for me to pull out my scuba gear. Okay, 
What's up? We're on a little ride right now. <laughs> yeah. Flying in this haze is pretty trippy, huh? I, I like it a lot. Yeah. I think it's pretty awesome. Like, yeah. It brings a whole different perspective on oh, how the commercial is going to be like, you know? Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. There's, There's ducks, ducks out there. Chilling out there? Yeah, they flew right in front of the drone. Now we're going to use an ember today. Get some slow mo bike oh, Hey, look at this cat. Oh, dang. That thing is huge. I have the same thing, but it's a little bit smaller than that. <laughs> a little bit smaller? Yeah, and the wheel. You like this big? Thing. Yeah, a little smaller. <laughs> It's tiny. Right? I was shocked it's at how very small it is. It's very lightweight. It's actually smaller than the Komodo. It's got the same kind of like venting like the Komodo as well, like it has on the side here. Uh, uh -huh. It's like the box form factor. So, I mean, that's that's kind of what we look for when we're flying FPV. It's got four terabytes internally. This does? It's, yeah. Wow. It's a little E-mount. So no electrical connections on the lens. Wait, Super 35 sensor, and I have a speed booster for it. Okay. So you could use a full frame EF. I got uh, this right here, the Ninja. We'll just use editing magic. So we'll just, just snap to that. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa, that was wow. fast. Oh, hey, okay. lunch is here too. You do not what? unbox the camera without <laughs> me. Hey, you guys were taking forever. You guys were eating you know lunch what? without us. I brought you guys food. You know what? <laughs> so you have a wave? Uh, I had the wave. It took a lot to make it look good. It was tough. So and I the highlights. Huh? Yeah, the highlights. It yeah. was tough, right? Yeah. Even shooting outdoors in, in like bright sun. Yeah. Was like kind of the toughest stuff. In a controlled like lighting situation where you're shooting, you know, product stuff and you have it lit. It's amazing. But yeah, this thing I have heard has come a long way. Yeah, and then what goes on here? A little grip I'm side? I'm actually thing. not sure, but it looks like it's got connections for I something. I think that's so where you side put Side grip, grip with like a the, yeah. start stop. Well, actually, yeah, it looks like this mount can be swapped yeah, out almost. You can take off these four screws and just put different mounting. Yeah, what frame rates can the wave go up to? A usable is 420. Yeah, 4K. 420. Like this is 800 frames right here that you're at. Yeah. Dude. It looks like the same user interface like the wave. Kind of looks the same how you yeah, scroll right? through this. It's way more just like responsive though. Yeah. And the ergonomics of the way how the wave was designed versus this now just works better. It's crazy how simple the menu is. Keep going oh. to the right. And that's right. essentially the entire menu. There is no like deep menu that you have to go into, which I thought was kind of nice. interesting. It's so easy to learn. Yeah. What is this? This HGL? HGL beta is not quite log, but you oh, know, okay. not Rec 709. This is tiny compared to what you've been carrying around all day, huh? Yeah. Oh yeah. This is my runaround rig right here. Oh, nice. You got the ready rig. I got the tilted nucleus uh, hand grips uh -huh. and I've got the full control right here. Oh, dang. Oh, that's sweet. So oh this, yeah. This and is like my runaround dock Beast. Oh, look at that. Insta360 X3. Oh, you got the X3. That's the good one. That shoots my BTS. Get on a one wheel with this bad boy. So we can power this off a 6S battery. A 6S battery. Wow. The voltage input is 12 to 30. You got the rest of the crew coming in. All right. Where's Time to rock and roll. Yeah, this is plenty wide enough. This thing is terrifying for FPV right there. Feeling pretty confident about this? Man, I, I've flown in like the jungle. Think about flying in vines. Dude, that must be so hard to see. Yeah, you do your first pass, it's chill. You know, yeah. you kind of see your line. Yeah. And then the second pass, you're just well, I'm glad I'm not flying this one. This is this would, I'd I'd totally get knocked down by whoa, one of these whoa, like little whoa, ghost whoa. branches. <laughs> You're here to fly this one. I'm the battery charger today. <laughs> <laughs> Terry, you don't even need FPV. You just do this. So there we go. Basically FPV right there here. You Your job is basically useless now. Your, your hand movement is very bad. <laughs> Show me a power loop. Oh, damn, that's a really tight one. <laughs> These are for you, and Sam, this is for you. Wait, what? Did it only come with one bullet? Ah! 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 Oh, dang, it's small but fierce. That's what she said. Changing the resolution horizontally actually doesn't seem to change the amount of frame rates you, we can get. It actually is all about the vertical resolutions. Whoa. <laughs> like with the pinky out. Time to get your potato mashed. There you oh! go. <laughs> Let me do one more where I just like really underexpose. It's gonna be dark, but hopefully the fire will just be in there. Cause that's one thing I noticed with these is you really have to like protect the highlights or else it easily clips. I wanted to make a shock wave like right here. <laughs> oh! <laughs> you know what she mean the cheek? Wait, which cheek? You didn't even flinch, Gene. Oh, oh that's like Matrix dude. shit, dude. I think we have enough footage to just make a trailer now. You know, the this- and then, and then it... Mew too much. This summer, this potato will get baked. <laughs> this one right here. <laughs> I am the 
Who up with this shirt? Even at T1.5, we're starting to fight some of the exposure here. But I think one of the things we can do is always open up to like a 345 degree shutter. So when I'm shooting liquids, I'm, I always run like 220 or even 320 because I want the liquid to join itself and be more fluid. Oh. So like all of those fluid pours I've done, those are all at 320 degree shutters. All right, so you're gonna not hit the camera. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the Phantom camera. Yeah, the OG. The, the OG Phantom, Phantom HD Gold. But the nice 4K one is what? You like 200 something thousand dollars? Yeah, yeah. Forever. So this has been the industry standard for yeah. getting like the crazy slow-mo mm -hmm. in cinema. Film, we'd have this big Mitchell camera, thousand foot mag, right? And you'd go, okay, rolling. It would get up to speed and the thing would whine and sound like it's gonna blow up and you get three seconds of roll time and then you just hear film flapping inside of it and you're done. This is 1500 frames at 2K but only like six seconds. And then you have oh, to stop. so these are bursts also. Yeah, you have to stop and then dump to the memory card. That's the memory card? <laughs> That's the mag. <laughs> Look oh, at all the pins. Oh. So now it's buffering. So we're like, oh cool, big thing, boom. And then I hit the button, the mag reader. Look, it's got the same plugs on it. Oh. And we give a laptop out when you rent it because it has their custom software on it. And then it comes with like, all of these freaking cables. I've been around Phantom cameras, but they're, they're always like pretty complicated. You need to come with like a lab suit and a laptop. Yeah, I mean, this like comes in three big cases. Oh, three. <laughs> lab coat included oh. in the rental kit. And then the footage looks amazing. The wave that we have, I think is less dynamic range and you can't black shade in camera. So you've got to do all that in post. So there's the wave. This is shaped more like a black magic pocket. Yeah. It looks like it's all designed just for cooling. The problem with the wave is you you had to transcode all their files only through their app. So this is now just straight ProRes. Yeah. They really seem to have designed this for like drone stuff almost. Yeah, right? I mean, well look, there's a Molex connector for power. That's yeah, not cinema. That not is. cinema. You want a limo? Yes. This only draws like, I think they said 40 watts or something. Okay. So, you know, a 100 watt hour battery, you're good for so, hours. It's definitely a lot simpler than that. <laughs> definitely need quite a bit of light. And also the light needs to definitely be anti-flicker. We did one shot with a Aperture 300D. Yeah, the apertures are flicker free. Obviously any of the old HMIs with electronic ballast can go into flicker free high speed mode. I mean, honestly, when I'm shooting high speed, it's M18s. But then you go and just film like a regular light <laughs> in the house. One shot of Derek jumping into the pool and he's just like on, off, <laughs> on. Off and it's so distracting, but it's funny how you just can't really see it with your eye. Not at all. I've shot a lot of product in high speed, uh -huh. you know, Apple laptops and things. Uh -huh. We're not shooting wide open because we need to have the product completely in focus or mostly in focus. Yeah. I always find myself at like T8 uh -huh. at a thousand frames a second. So you just have to flood everything with light. Yeah. So that's why HMIs a lot of time, you know, make sure to allocate for your lighting budget. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we can rent you those too, and any of the bigger tungsten lights. Yeah, we'll thousand work and ice. over. There's like almost no video assist tool, so definitely want a monitor that has yeah. like your waveform and peaking. So the the wave, you would see a lot of noise, even like in your mid to low shadows, and I don't see as much there. Oh, uh, some shots look really cool in slow motion, and some shots it just looks like. It's just going really slow. I, think I feel like this train's just gonna really slow. Unless you have like debris or smoke or something. Ooh, I feel ooh, like it's just gonna look really Jump slow. on the tracks. <laughs> no, it's fine. When it hits you and you go flying, I'll totally get it. It would actually be a, a better shot if yeah, like, yeah. my guts are just being Whoa. ripped apart in a thousand <laughs> frames per second. We should totally film a fart in a thousand oh, frames dude, per second. No. This is a really slow train. <laughs> You know what you can do is just time this to house music. So it's like <laughs> What I like about super slow-mo though is that you don't have to be very stable with your shot. Like you could have the shakiest camera Dude, movement so good. and it just looks like you're a steady cam off. Oh yeah. Another thing I noticed is when you're filming high speed, like usually you have your lens wide open. So you have a very shallow depth of field. And when you're trying to get a close up of something, like keeping that focus in is really tough. But right. the beauty of slow motion is that you only need that subject to be in focus for like a split, split second. second yeah. And then you just slow mo that split second right. and it looks like you're an excellent focus puller. 
<laughs> yeah, you're like, I nailed this. This will be a really interesting low light test because it's like 8, 17, 8, 15 p.m. right now. Yeah. I'd be curious on how much grain we get if I try to boost this up a little bit. I'm way, way better than the wave. Like. Yeah miles better than the wave. I mean, considering that it's made by Freefly and the size and weight of this thing, it really seems like they had FPV drones in mind. Well, let's try out this lens too. It's a 7.5 mil F2.8 fisheye lens. This thing was like super cheap on Amazon. All right, so just to get an idea of how slow a thousand frames per second is, I'm gonna play you a two second clip and here we go. All right, cool. So now I'm just gonna take that same clip, that two seconds, and replay it back in slow motion. And while we wait for this to finish, I'm just gonna read some comments. Link's Handler says weekly uploads would be awesome. So yeah, I actually am working on trying to figure out the workflow so that I can put out weekly videos consistently without losing my mind. <laughs> Alexander says this looks incredible. Also, sorry, is Gene getting more and more swole each video? Well, thank you. I have been working out, but realistically, you were just noticing that I shrank my shirt too much with the dryer. <laughs> Forget the camera. Damn, it's just nice to see you guys. Well, thank you, Mark Kawabungwas. I'm happy to see you too. You're one of my favorite YouTubers. Probably end up getting that dog leash. Yeah, if you haven't seen, there's this random dog leash that Carrie found on Amazon and it is the best because it is hands-free and it's just, it's, if you're a dog owner, you gotta try it. If you're ever gonna buy anything from one of my recommendations, it's it's this. If you have a dog, you, link in description. Adult men giddy like school children. Love it. <laughs> yeah, that is pretty much the foundation of this channel, pretty much. We need the A6700 review yeah it does seem like a pretty cool camera i've just been a little busy lately so i have not had a chance to check it out but first impressions it seems like a pretty good budget 10 bit option so i definitely want to check it out and see if it's something i could recommend glad to see sam is doing well yeah it's been really nice having him be involved in the videos again lately and protecting us from those evil ass bubbles and finally we reached the end of the two second clip it had a thousand frames per second Whew. all right i really need to quickly cut the camera though every time I just let the camera sit for a few seconds. It's just like tons of data. Well, that's enough risking $20,000 per flight. Everything's self-contained, so it's just as easy as flying pretty much any other camera. But other than that, you don't really have to do anything different. But my overall thoughts, I just love having like a miniature phantom, it feels like. And on that, you can take around town or put on a drone and all that. And just the fact that it's super simple and easy to use. And honestly, I like, it's a lot of fun. I'm really sad that I have to send this back. Like, I want to keep playing with it. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up with some shots of the dogs drinking water because Carrie says apparently they don't accidentally scoop like a spoon for water. They use the bottom of their tongues or yeah, something? it goes under. Oh, Like yeah. this, not like this. We need to see it to believe it. Mm -hmm.